We are halfway through December, nearly two months into the NBA season, and the Minnesota Timberwolves are sitting at the top of the Western Conference. Had I told you that around Halloween, there is no shot that you would believe these Timberwolves would have a better record than the reigning champion Denver Nuggets or the young exciting core in Oklahoma City who's been building through the draft for the past five years. Hell, you wouldn't even believe that the Timberwolves would have a better record than that amazing duo in Dallas who has been putting on a show. Why? Because throughout it all, the Timberwolves have exceeded everyone's expectations. You could attribute the Timberwolves success to many things. You could say it's because Anthony Edwards is an ascending superstar who gets better every single day. Or maybe you could argue that it's finally because Rudy Gobert is playing great defense for the Timberwolves, something he hasn't been able to do since he got onto the team. Hell, you could even argue that maybe it's because Carl Anthony Towns has finally fit into his role and he's healthy again. Because at one point, this man was destined to be the Timberwolves franchise player. Of course, that's not how his career has worked out. He is still a star, some would say, but he's not a franchise guy. That title would have to go to Edwards for this team. So Carl Anthony Towns has had to adapt to his new role, and I think he's fitting into it really well as the secondary option on this team. And by no means is it Carl Anthony Towns' fault that this organization failed to build around him for the first half decade of his career. You know, they did try something with Jimmy Butler at one point, but with a bunch of missed draft picks, it's really hard to build a team, especially because no free agents are heading to Minnesota. But anyway, let's jump back to the present, where the Timberwolves got their 18-5 record not by beating up on the really bad teams in the organization, and there are a few of those. I'm talking Pistons, Spurs, you know who they are. They have been really bad this season, but that's not how the Timberwolves got their record. They got it by going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best teams in the world. Yes, I said world. Hell, a good example, the Denver Nuggets early in the season. What did the Timberwolves do? Oh, just put up 110 to 89. And I bring up this game specifically because I believe it is a perfect example of what the Timberwolves have accomplished all season. If you look throughout the association, the Timberwolves have the highest defensive rating of any team. Hell, if you look at the top 10 defensive rating in players, four of those guys are going to be Timberwolves. I'm talking Nas Reed, Rudy Gobert, Kyle Anderson, and Anthony Edwards. All four of them have been playing amazing defense. The whole team has. Shout out Chris Finch. And if you take a look back at that Nuggets game, they only allowed 89 points because, you know, their guys were shooting poorly. Jamal Murray struggled that night. Michael Porter Jr., the guy who doesn't pass the rock at all, if he's not having a good shooting night, kind of useless. Kidding, by the way. And not only has this game exemplified how the team's been playing defensively all year, but I think it's a perfect showcase for how their offense is being run through their two superstars. Because in this game, Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards combined for 40 plus points, which is what they've been doing the entire season. Both of these guys have been averaging over 20 points, and that's exactly what happened in this game versus the Nuggets. Not only that, but they've got a six man of the year candidate on this team in Nas Reed, who brings a spark off the bench. He's been doing this all year. And in the game versus the Nuggets, he was able to provide the team with 16 points in only 19 minutes. And he got a few boards because that's basically his job as the backup big man on this team. Nas is going out and getting himself about 22 minutes a night every one in which he had to earn and he's the team's third highest scorer averaging about 13.4 minutes a night his rebounds are looking solid 4.5 and this is the first time in his career where his plus minus is in the positive so shout out Nas Reed who's come a long way since being drafted for the team back in 2019 if it weren't for role players like him and Mike Conley, they wouldn't be where they're at today at the top of the Western Conference. And speaking of Mike Conley, some might think he's retired or forgotten about him because he was drafted all the way back in 2007 and he's been nearly a starter his entire career. Of course, he played most of that with the Memphis Grizzlies where he got snubbed a few times, you know, he wouldn't really get the recognition he deserved. 
but he finally got that with the Utah Jazz, where he was an all-star for one season. And with the Minnesota Timberwolves, he's been a really good point guard, facilitating the balls to the stars, and his numbers show that. I mean, his assists are at about six per game. He's contributing offensively with about 12 points a night, and his three-point shooting is very efficient, especially for Mike Conley. Plus, this man does not turn the ball over. Maybe one per night, that's it. And he's always got the ball in his hands, you know? Him, Nas Reed, very important to this team. Now, one of the stars that I haven't gotten around to mentioning yet is Rudy Gobert. And that's because he didn't have the greatest game versus the Nuggets, which is what I was using as a comparison for all the other guys. But Rudy Gobert has been playing really well, especially at what he's best at this season. The man turned it up when it came to blocks, which have nearly doubled. He's averaging about 2.4 this season, plus his rebounds are up. I'd say the only flaw I've seen in Rudy Gobert is that he isn't shooting the best from the field. I know his percentage is slightly down from previous seasons, but it's okay for Rudy Gobert to not be the best scorer because they've already got a couple of guys that can do that. And speaking of a couple of other guys, well, I haven't mentioned the team's small forwards. They've got two of them, one in a lockdown defender, Jaden McDaniels, and then the other being Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who had a lot of potential coming out of college, hasn't really panned out the way the team that drafted him would have hoped so, but these two guys have been swapping when it comes to starting at the small forward position. They've done their job. None of their stats look overly pretty, but if you actually watch the game, you know these guys are fitting into the system perfectly and playing their roles. You know, when this team first came together and added Rudy Gobert via trade, I had my doubts, as did many others, especially with the overpay that Minnesota sent Utah Jazz's way. Four first round picks, kinda egregious. But do I think it was an absolute robbery? Well, with the way that Gobert has been playing and the team has been looking, it might not go down as the worst trade in history. That might have to go to Paul George. Yeah, that's right. You heard me, Clippers. Awful trade, okay? But anyway, this team I am excited for. I'm rooting for them, you know? Of course, I'm a Lakers fan, so I don't want the Timberwolves to win it all. But hell, they make it to the second, third round. That's pretty impressive. I feel like that's a win in their books. All right, that's about it for this video. I really just wanted to talk about the Timberwolves because they were the first ever team I recorded a video on. And at the time, I believe the core was going to be centered around, you know, Anthony Edwards, Cat, and D'Angelo Russell. Talk about being wrong. But here we are. Uh, anyway, this is.